Friends, good morning and a very happy Easter to you this morning. Uh, it is wonderful to have you with us here at St John's for our online service of Easter Sunday celebration. Whether you're a regular at St John's or at St Saviour's in Highgreen, or whether you're just visiting our online worship page this morning, uh, you are most welcome and it is wonderful to be with you. And thank you to you too for welcoming us into your home. For those of you who I haven't yet met, my name's Carl, I'm the Youth and Families Minister here at St John's and I have the great joy of leading this morning's service uh, alongside Rick, our vicar, who later will be unpacking God's word for us and members of our music team who will be leading us in our song worship this morning. Everything that you'll need for this morning's service will appear on your screen, so please do join in with the words of prayer and praise and with the songs too. When we come to the liturgy, please join in with the words that will be in bold type. And when we come to sing, let's sing loudly and with great joy. Now, after all, it's only those in our own houses who will be able to hear us. This morning is an all age celebration, which means that if you are one or 91, or indeed anywhere in between, there is something for everyone this morning. Uh, if you would like a couple of Sunday Club activities as extras, uh, there will be some on the online worship page. Uh, if you go to Sunday Club activity, uh, there will be some things for you to use. Uh, please do make use of that as you would like to. Now friends, I don't know about you, but Easter is one of my favourite times of the year. And not because of the chocolate eggs, although those are pretty great. Uh, but because of the words that we read in Mark chapter 16, verse 6. Do not be afraid, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. What incredible, amazing and fantastic words they are. He has risen. Later on in our service we will hear the rest of that reading from Mark uh, chapter 16, but those three words, he has risen, well they make up a part of our opening praise this morning. In a moment, we will say those words together. And can I suggest that as we do, we say them with great joy and enthusiasm. Because even in the current situation we find ourselves in, even in these strange and unusual times, those words are still true and they are still amazing. And that is something that is worth being excited about. But before we come to those words of opening praise, we're going to take a moment of silence, uh, an opportunity for us to think about what it might have been like on that very first Easter Sunday morning at that tomb. So let's take a moment of quiet to reflect. So with great joy we proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. This is the good news, the grave is empty, Christ is risen, Alleluia. This is the good news, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. Alleluia! This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Alleluia! God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our opening hymn this morning is a wonderful reminder that Jesus has the victory. He has conquered the grave and death has lost its sting. 
Let's join Paul and Fee as they lead us in thine be the glory. It's a wonderful hymn that tells us about Jesus's victory over death, a victory that he has won by giving up his life on the cross for our sin, for those times that we have said, shove off God, I'm in charge, no to your rules. Easter Sunday is a day of great joy and celebration because of what Jesus has done and achieved for us. But it's also a day of sorrow as we remember that it was our sin that took Jesus to the cross in the first place. Perhaps today of all days as we celebrate Jesus's risen life we should also confess our sins to him. Turning back to God to say sorry for the times that we have disobeyed him and ignored him and to ask for his forgiveness. Before we say words of confession together, let's take a moment to think about the things that we'd like to say sorry to God for, the things that we have done this week or even this day that we would like to bring before him in repentance. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess our weakness and unbelief. Like Mary at the tomb, 
we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal us and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it is a wonderful and astounding truth that God so loved that he gave his son. Jesus is the saviour of the world. Uh, we're going to sing of that wonderful truth now as Steve leads us in our next song. Please do join in. He bore the weight of our sin and pain 
With a cry, he said, it is finished. He's alive. Death has been defeated. Please join me in a prayer of thanks and praise to God. Father in heaven, we worship you and praise you for all that you have done for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for the way that you gave up your life so that we could have life. Holy Spirit, thank you that Jesus is now alive and that means that death has been defeated. As we come to listen to your word, the Bible now, please help us to understand it and to believe it. Amen. Well, we've reached the point in our service where we are going to listen to God speak to us. And first as we hear his word read in the Bible and then as Rick unpacks that for us and helps us think about what that means. Just before we hear God's word read, I'm going to hand over to Rick, who has an exciting activity for all of us to think about. Friends, good morning, and can I add my welcome and say a very happy Easter to you from myself and from Gail. Hope you have a really special weekend. Well, I have a confession to make to you, and here it is. I am a failure. I'll say that again. I am a failure. But here's the thing. I guess you are too. And before I tell you what I have failed at, I'd like you to have a think. When was a time when I really failed? Maybe it was something at school. Maybe it was something at home. Maybe something you should have done for mum and dad. Or maybe mums and dads, it was something you should have done for the kids or didn't do. Maybe it was in some way at work, something that just didn't go right. Possibly even you could just say, well, my health has failed. I've, I've not been as healthy as I would like. Or maybe it was just that resolution to give up chocolate for Lent. So here's the question, when was a time when you failed? Take a moment quietly to think about that, or maybe why not talk to the folks who are with you if you're with other people and tell them about a time when you failed. Let's take a moment for that. Well, here is a failure that I remember very vividly. In fact, more than one failure. Here was the first one. Then came the second one. Then came, yes, the third one. <laughs> I'm afraid to say that, yes, I failed my driving test three times. Uh, I'm delighted to say there did come a time, however, number four, <laughs> and that was I hope, the end of my failures, uh, in that sense, at least. But it's hard to fail, isn't it? And yet, Easter has a lot to do with failure. So I'd like you now to listen to our Bible reading for today, the Gospel story. It's going to be read by Ruth. And as you do, just be thinking about this. It seems to me there are three failures in the Easter story. See if you can spot them. Today's reading is taken from Mark 16, verse 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Do not be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the places where they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, isn't it a fantastic story? 
and I just thought having heard the story you might want to actually be able to picture it a little bit more and so I'm really grateful to one of our church members, Cubby Allsop, who's done some beautiful pictures of that first Easter story which I'd like to share with you a little bit this morning. Here's the first picture just to remind you of the story. But I wonder, did you spot those three failures in the story? Three people or groups of people who seemed to fail. And I've got some clues on the table in front of me which might just prompt you to think who they might be. Here's the first clue. It's a jar. I guess the kind of thing you might find perfume or spices in. And who does that remind us of in the story? Well, of course, it is those women, isn't it? The women who went running to the tomb and there they are. And you can imagine them, can't you? They've been out on the Saturday night uh, after the Sabbath has formally ended. They've been to the shops, they've got some ointment and some spices. Uh, and first thing, Sunday morning, they're up really early and they rush to the tomb. And what are they expecting to find at the tomb? Well, they're taking the spices because they're expecting Jesus to be dead. Now, does that strike you as a little surprising? Because if we've been following the story up to now, we know that for the last weeks, these women, along with the other disciples, have been travelling with Jesus to Jerusalem, and on the journey, three times at least, he has very clearly said, I'm going to be handed over, I will be killed, and three days later, I will rise from the dead. And yet they come to the tomb, not expecting to find Jesus risen, but Jesus dead. Hmm, wonder why that might be. Anyway, we know how the story goes on, don't we? Because, of course, they get to the tomb and they get a big surprise. Here, can you see the surprise on their faces there? They've seen something that they can't quite explain. They're a little bit alarmed, it tells, says in the reading. So let's see what it is they see. And there it is. Do you see the tomb carved in the rock? They look inside. No body there. And, of course... We know what happens next, don't we? They see, sitting in the tomb, all in white, a young man. There's actually two in this picture, because one of the other Gospels, Luke, does mention there was another angel. But we only hear about one in Luke's Gospel. And there is the angel, and of course says to the women, he's not here, he's been raised, go and tell his disciples and Peter. And what do the women do? How does the reading finish? They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Hmm, interesting. So here's the women. They come expecting to find Jesus dead. When they find out he's alive and they're told to go somewhere, they, they don't say a word to anybody. Seems to me like they certainly look like failures to me, do they not to you? So there's the first failure. Who could be the other failures? Well, here I've got, can you see that? I'm holding it up. I've got a net. Because, of course, there are some people in the story who might have used nets quite a bit. I wonder if you remember who that was. It's Peter, isn't it? Peter and some of the other disciples we know were fishermen. And what did we see of the disciples and Peter when we last saw them in the story? Well, of course, the disciples were in the garden, weren't they, with Jesus. That night he was arrested. We last saw them running off, all of them leaving him. And what about Peter? We last saw him at the fire. Do you remember with those people in the courtyard and he's busy saying, I don't know Jesus. I've never known Jesus. No. And the third time he denies Jesus. So it certainly looks like Peter and the disciples also were failures. The women, Peter and the disciples. But I wonder if there isn't even one more failure on that first Easter day. Think for a moment. And here's the clue. What have I got here? These are linen cloths. These are like grave cloths. Do you remember what Jesus' body was put in? The grave cloths. Now think of it just for a moment. Through the first eight chapters of Mark's Gospel, Jesus has shown unexpected power, doing things only God can do. And then in chapter 8, Peter says, you are God's king, the Messiah. And from then on, Jesus is talking about unexpected weakness, how he's going to be killed and, and dealt with so badly and how it'll be tough for the disciples and they need to be ready to take up their cross as well. So there's unexpected power and then suddenly unexpected weakness. And of course, it all ends with his body shrouded in burial cloths in the tomb. Even Jesus seems to have been a failure. But then, but then 
think what happened on that first Easter day, how each of those failures, something happened. Let's begin with Jesus. What does the angel say? He's not here. He has been raised. Do you see what that's saying? You see, Jesus said he came to live and to die so we could be forgiven and have eternal life. And when Jesus was raised by God, it's as if God is giving a big thumbs up. My son has done the work. I agree. Jesus is indeed the saviour you need. So not a failure at all. And then what about those fishermen? What about those fishermen and Peter? Don't you love the message the angel brings to them? Go and tell the disciples and Peter. Peter is singled out. And why? He's the one who'd blown it biggest of all, wasn't he? And it's almost as if the angel is saying, um, saying to Peter, look, it's forgotten and you are forgiven. It's forgotten and you are forgiven. Wonderful, isn't it? Not a failure. And then, of course, those women, those women who brought the spices. Well, isn't it a funny ending at the end of the reading, how they say nothing and the last word is they were afraid. That's how it finishes. Well, of course, we know it didn't end there. It could not have ended there or Mark would not be telling us the story. And he's giving us a pretty big nudge there, don't you think? You see, each one of these, they looked a failure, but they found a future. So Jesus, not dead, but alive again. The disciples, not useless, but useful. The women, not afraid, but bold again. And that is Easter. Easter is all about this. It is about a future for failures. A future for failures. Because that's what the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ does. I wonder if any of you know my favourite, or one of my favourite TV programmes at the moment. It's this. It's called The Repair Shop. And what happens is this. There's a big old barn somewhere in the countryside, and it is filled with all kinds of experts, people with skills. So there's people brilliant working with wood, other people who are great with knitting needles, or maybe with needle and thread. There are people who are great at repairing mechanical things or working with metal. And what they do is this. People bring to them old objects and treasures, things that are broken and failed and no use anymore, and they get mended and restored, given a new life. In other words, it's all about a future for failures. And friends, do you hear that? This first Easter day shows that God is like that. He doesn't chuck out failures and say they're no good. He mends them and gives them a future. He takes people like you and me, who are weak, often selfish, who say to God, shove off, I'm in charge. Even people like us who one day will die. And he gives us a future. And that is so important today and every day. Right now, we do not know what the future holds. This coronavirus seems to have everything in its grip, and we are afraid, feeling our weakness. Some of us really worry because we're vulnerable to this possible pandemic. And the question is, does this mean God has given up on us? And as we come to an empty tomb, and we see Jesus alive again, we say, no, <laughs> there is a future for failures. So important to hear that. So it means that if we live on and struggle through this pandemic, Jesus is alive, he is with us, and his resurrection forgiveness and power can touch our lives every day. So even today, whatever happened in the past, you and I have a future. And dare I say it, even if for some of us the very worst were to happen, we are still then with Jesus and he will have the most wonderful future beyond our imagining for us. <laughs> and maybe today on Easter Day, you feel a little bit like those women running from the tomb. You are still afraid. You don't know what to say. Jesus didn't give up on them and he will not give up on you. And who knows? Because of Jesus alive again, because there's a future for failures, you too may one day have a story to tell. Praise God.
for this Easter day. And friends, happy Easter to you. Well, friends, we're going to affirm our faith in Jesus now. Uh, and that means we're going to say some words together to remind ourselves and each other of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. The words that we're going to say will appear on the screen. And as we say each sentence, uh, we're going to gradually get quieter and quieter as we remember that Jesus was put into that quiet tomb after he died. But then we're going to get louder and louder again as we remember and celebrate that Jesus is no longer in that quiet tomb, but is now alive and is seated in heaven with God the Father. So friends, let us affirm our faith. Equal with God, Jesus is Lord. Emptied himself, Jesus is Lord. Came as a slave, Jesus is Lord. Found as a man, Jesus is Lord. Humbly obeyed, Jesus is Lord. Went to death, Jesus is Lord. Death on a cross. Jesus is Lord. God raised him up. Jesus is Lord. Gave him the name. Jesus is Lord. Higher than all. Jesus is Lord. Every knee bow. Jesus is Lord. All tongues confess. Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is alive. And today we celebrate as we remember that glorious day, that first Easter Sunday. Please do join in with Paul and Fee as they lead us in our next song, Glorious Day. And then the Potters will lead us in a time of prayer.
trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. Wonderful day my beloved will bring me. My Savior Jesus is mine. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he just divine. So, first of all, on behalf of us all, can I wish you all a very happy Easter. Um, this is a, a joyous time of year for celebration, but we also appreciate that this is a time of some great difficulty this year for so many people in so many different ways. Um, so now let's take a little bit of time to uh, prepare ourselves uh, as we come before the Lord. Dear God, we thank you for Easter. Thank you that we can celebrate you rising from the dead and the new life that you promise. We thank you for our chocolate eyes and the joy of celebrating together. Father, we want to lift up our families to you. Many of us are unable to see our families this Easter. This includes members of our St John's family. We ask that you bless them and keep them safe. On this Easter day, help each of us to reach out to our family and make contact by telephone or by computer. May they know your presence and your good news. Father, we thank you for spring. Thank you for the new life that we see around us. The grass is growing, the tulips are popping up through the soil, and the birds are singing in the trees. Thank you for the joy and the peace that these things bring. Father, we thank you for our neighbours. In this time of lockdown, we thank you for the talks that we are having with each other over the garden fence. And thank you for the smiles that we give each other as we walk down the garden path and see each other in the gardens. Thank you for the community spirit that we've seen, Lord, as we stand alongside our neighbours to clap to the NHS each Thursday. Bless our neighbours, Lord. Bless these relationships and keep us safe in them safe. Lord, you want to thank you for our friends. We want to thank you for our friends who we haven't seen for a while during the lockdown. We thank you for the precious time that we have been able to share through computer screens and telephone calls. Help us to keep contact with our friends so we can support them, show your love for them, and enjoy laughter with them at this uncertain time. We pray for everyone who is suffering from coronavirus. We ask you to help family and friends of people who have died from coronavirus to know you as they mourn and be comforted. We pray for all of the doctors and nurses treating the ill and who are working hard to find a cure for the virus. We pray for our government to be able to make the right decisions for our country and to stop the spread of the virus. We pray for Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, and our other government ministers who have coronavirus. Help them, Lord, help them all make a full recovery and help them seek you at this time. Father, we pray for all the people who are working and volunteering at this time. This includes the following. Shop workers, carers, food bank volunteers, NHS volunteers and staff, pharmacies, the police and delivery drivers. Thank you for, the, for their courage, willingness and endurance. Protect them and equip them, Lord. Lord, we pray for people who are sick, those who are lonely, and those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. In a moment of silence now, let's name before the Lord people we know who come to mind. Father God, we lift these people to you and we ask that you will bless them and that they will know your presence and draw close to you. And finally, as we go into this new week, Help us to keep safe, protect us, Father, and equip us for the week ahead. Help us to seize opportunities to share your word and your love with those around us, whether they are near or far away. Amen. And now we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Potter family. Well, we're nearly at the end of our Easter celebration this morning, uh, but we can't end without singing our brilliant next song. Uh, The words which remind us of the Easter story and of those great words said by the angel that Christ is risen. Let's sing together, See What a Morning. Friends, that brings us to the end of our Easter celebration this morning. Uh, Thank you for being with us and for worshipping with us. Uh, If you're watching at home and this is the first time that you've ever heard this good news of Easter, uh, or maybe you've heard it before, but this morning something clicked for you, uh, then please do get in touch because we'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, You can get in touch with us by emailing us through our church website. Uh, So please do have a look. Uh, And if this morning something has struck you for the first time about the Lord Jesus, then please do let us know uh, because we'd love to support you and help you through thinking that through even more. A blessing as we finish. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to us who believe the gate of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give us joy as we share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, 
who filled the disciples with life of the risen Lord, empower us and fill us with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Friends, thank you for joining us. We look forward to worshipping with you again next week. Please do enjoy the rest of your Sunday and once again, a very happy Easter to you all.